this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is the ROG Strix Z790A Gaming Wi-Fi D4. And in this video, I'm going to be unboxing, setting up, and showing off this motherboard, talking about the various highlights of it, and things of interest, as well as showing you my setup, and some clips of the installation process, and all the different things of interest. Now, this is a DDR4 motherboard which has D4 in its name, and that is the clue which I missed when I initially tried to set this up and tried to use DDR5 RAM in it, but that's a different story. If you watched that video, thanks for watching and thanks for coming back. And now I'm going to talk to you about my experiences with it, which are actually really good. Now, getting this motherboard out of the box, there isn't a great deal of stuff included, but it has a lot of hidden highlights to it which I'm going to show off as we go through, which includes PCIe Gen 5 capabilities in the X16 slots and the top X16 slot, but it also has four M2 ports on it for Gen 4 drives, so you can actually install multiple NVMe drives, and I'll get to that later on, as well as speed tests and other things, and a little bit of benchmarking at the end, because I want to show the cooling performance and the heat the thing gives off I'm using a Core i9-13900K processor and in the box you get a few different things, not very much I'll be honest. You'll see a number of different M3 sticker double standoff additions for M2 drives, some cable tidying bits and you also have a wireless antenna for if you're using the Wi-Fi capabilities because it is a Wi-Fi motherboard obviously but it also has not only Wi-Fi 6, but also 2.5 gigabyte Ethernet port as well. And you'll see on the rear, there are a lot of ports as well, including DisplayPort and HDMI, in case you need those for any reason when going for the installation of Windows, for example. And you'll also see a number of other things. Now, one of the things that struck me immediately, and I'll go into a bit more on this later on, is there's only four SATA ports, so you can only connect up to four hard disk drives or SSDs on this, which is curious. But for me, that's not really going to be an issue because I'm only using one SSD and then multiple NVMe drives. So if you're going through the latest generation, really want to be using NVMe anyway. If you're using PCIe Gen 4 NVMe, you can get up to 7,000 megabytes per second read-write speeds potentially. So it's pretty impressive. Now, this is an interesting looking motherboard with some Pac-Man styling to it, some subtle accents and some less subtle ones, and a nice bit of RGB lighting on the ROG logo that you'll see in the top left there, and I'll show that later on, and some other things of interest, which I'll get to. You'll notice it has multiple different connectors for CPU fans and chassis fans, and the AIO one is just in the bottom left of the CPU, which is an interesting positioning cabling wise it also has multiple rgb headers so you see there's two in the bottom left and two in the top right and that's curious because that means that you can basically connect up multiple fans and i will show it with leon lee's sl120 v2 fans at the end of this video but also allows you to connect up loads of different things and then obviously have rgb syncing via the armory create software and aurora sync as well so you have the option for a lot of different things in the top right you'll also see there are four little leds to let you know when it's cycling through and basically doing its sort of boot checks to make sure that it is finding the right things and everything's working as should be. There's no display with numbers on it or anything like that. You just have some lights, which is a bit of a downgrade from a Formula Z690 motherboard, but it's still a nice looking board and it's performed really well. My boot times have been fantastic. Stability has been really good. And there are a number of other highlights to it as well. Obviously, it's a DDR4 motherboard, so you use DDR4 RAM on it. Here you can see my initial setup process where I was trying to use 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 without realizing this was a DDR4 motherboard. But the benefits of DDR4 is it's a bit more stable and potentially you can use the higher speeds from the previous generation, which has obviously been around for a while, and it will go up to 5,333 overclocked as well potentially, and up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 you could fit in there. I'm using a Core i9-13900K Intel CPU to make the most of this, and this motherboard does support AI overclocking and other things, which you can access within the software. But I've actually found, even just out of the box, on standard settings, it delivers really good performance. I've been using it for video editing, and for gaming, and for streaming, and obviously for crafting videos like this, and also doing multiple things at the same time. So for example, later on, when I was running the benchmarks, I was also editing videos at the same time. This CPU and this setup in general, with the 32 gigabytes of RAM that you'll see in a minute, 
and also obviously NVMe drives and a 3090 graphics card mean that you can get really good performance out of it overall. This is a really good setup and I'm really pleased with how it's running. The setup of it has also been joyful for multiple reasons and I really like some of the little things. Obviously there's a lot of ports on the back here, I'm going to leave all the specs in the description, but you'll see that it has two USB-C ports. You also have access to put USB-C on the front panel connectors on your case as well if you have it and also multiple just standard USB-A's. You also have the BIOS flashback button which is really handy if you've got BIOS on a USB stick you can put it in there and then you can basically update it with a single press using that. A strict setup is really good for that. But one of the downsides I think is definitely going to be the fact that it only has four data ports so you can only connect up to four hard drives or SSDs so if you have a lot of larger storage that you want to attach to this that's going to potentially be a problem i think this is the least i've ever seen on a motherboard very minimal amount but it, and again it might not be an issue it really depends on what you're planning on doing but i think it's worth bearing in mind and that's the sort of thing i'm going to point out the little highlights and low lights as i go through and talk to you about my experiences with it and the setup process of it one of which is obviously make sure that you get the right ram before you buy your motherboard and here i'm using kingston fury beast ram with glorious rgb lighting this is 32 gigabytes of the ddr4 a nice little glow to it which you'll see at the end which you can obviously sync with the motherboard software as well so you can sync the lighting on this along with the rgb lighting on the motherboard itself and potentially other things too if you've got them connected up for example lee and lee's streamers and rgb fans will also sync with the lighting and that so you have the flexibility to do that now if you're installing two sticks just put them in a2 and b2 and this is useful actually because you'll see i'm also going to be using a kraken z73 now if you want to check it out i've done a full guide and set up on the case and the installation all the different steps i went through installing this motherboard and other things i'll link to that in the description it's a bit longer and a bit more in depth here i'm just sort of talking about the highlights but this is one of the things of interest is that it has multiple m2 ports so under all these heat shields you have multiple places that you can install mvme drives this is a kingston kc 3000 gen 4 drive which runs at up to 7000 megabytes per second now historically you usually had to install drives with basically trying to put the top one as the one you want to use because that would give you the fastest speed but what's actually interesting about this is all four spots that you'll see me unveiling and installing in here will actually gen 4 pcie gen 4 and they'll run at x4 speeds as well so you can get maximum speed out of it even if you pop play all of them so i'm going to fill all of them up i'm actually using one crucial p3 drive which is gen 3 but the other ones are all gen 4 and i've tested as i'll show later on and they all run at the right speed which is pretty impressive you also obviously have the various different heat shields and you'll see that there are thermal covers on there as well so that you can keep the drives running cool and performing well even when your machine gets hot if it does get hot and the installation is fairly straightforward you can see obviously some stickers to take off and the other things what you will notice is just like a couple of last generations from rog you actually have some little plastic clips which hold the drives down so you don't need a screw and it's little thought processes like that that make this a lot simpler to install because you don't need to worry about little tiny m2 screws and they also supply extra clips in case you need them which is nice another highlight of this z790 is they have four holes around the cpu which actually are adjustable so you'll see that there's actually sort of two notches on each corner so you have eight holes total really where that means that you can use previous generation coolers so you can use both lga 1200 and lga 1700 coolers which means if you're using an older cooler and if you're reusing one as i am because i'm using the nzxt kraken z73 again um, i've reused it from a previous build and uh, you can basically use that bracket with the LGA 1200 and not have to worry about getting an LGA 1700 which makes the setup a lot lot easier now here you can see me installing it in the Lee and Lee dynamic Evo case which as you'll see is nice and roomy this is an ATX motherboard so ideal for this sort of build plenty of room and also works sits really nicely in here obviously it's got this sort of silver and white finish in it which then ends up looking really good at the end so obviously i've skipped all the stages if you want to see the full build check out the links in the description but here you can see the finished thing you'll notice some subtle rgb 
on the motherboard itself. And then obviously I've added a lot more garish RGB, depending on whether you're into RGB or not. But I think it looks really nice. It sits really nicely with the other bits that I've got in there. And it just works with a nice sort of contrast of black and silver and white. Also throwing in the Gigabyte 3090 graphics card and then go through some of that RGB lighting. Now I have been using this machine regularly for the last couple of weeks and obviously working on it daily, video editing, gaming, long gaming sessions. And I'm happy to report that it doesn't run too hot. I will show you some tests in a minute of sort of the performance of the cooler and just how hot the 13900K runs. But what I found is out of the box, without any of the AI overclocking, just on default settings, you can see a good look at the temperatures here. I'm doing video editing. I've been playing games. The GPU sitting around 50 degrees. CPUs similar, 30 to 40 degrees centigrade. And it will get a little bit hotter than that, but not very much during the gaming session. So what I found is actually runs really cool. And the performance is really good too. And my experience has been really fantastic. Now what I wanted to demonstrate was what I was talking about earlier on. So I'm now using Crystal Dismark along with Task Manager and L-Connect to basically demonstrate the performance of it. Because what I wanted to check was to make sure that all of the M2 drives actually do run at that X4 Gen 4 speed, because that's obviously important. If you're spending money on NVMe drives and you've bought Gen 4 drives, if they're not running as they should be, then not ideal. So here I'm running a test on the Kingston drive, which is obviously installed on the top slot, but you can see it's just below the 7,000 megabytes per second that it should be getting on the read-write speeds, and I ran the tests in there to make sure. Now, I can say from experiencing things that it boots up really quickly, so I have Windows installed on this drive, and I basically turn the machine on it, and it boots in a blink of an eye. It boots up really quickly and nice and smoothly, and I'm not having any problems with it there. Also, just transferring files around is really good, so I would highly recommend if you're buying this motherboard, get yourself a nice Gen 4 drive and use that as your operating system and maybe other one for games and that's a point i've got multiple drives some for video some for games whatever else i'm using samsung magician just to demonstrate and you can see if you go into the interface on that you'll see pci gen 4 x4 so running x4 means that it's running at its maximum speed it's using four lanes in the pcie and it's getting the best performance out of there now i do have a couple of gen 3 drives in here you can see they're running at gen 3 x4 but they should be if you're using gen 4 running at that maximum. The Sabrent, for example, that I showed at the end is actually in an expander card, which is in the bottom of the case, which you will have spied earlier on if you are paying attention. Then I ran Cinebench R23 and did the multi-core test on this because I wanted to see how it's sort of handled. Because when I did the Z690 with a 12900K, I found that out of the box, it ran really hot and it was pushing like 100 degrees on all cores, and some of the AI overclocking was causing me problems. I had to undervolt the CPU to get it to run a little bit cooler. And if you're pushing it with Cinebench, now to be fair, Cinebench is really intensive. You probably wouldn't be using this much processing power on a daily basis, but it's good sort of easy test to make sure and work out sort of what the performance level is going to be and whether it's going to get too hot and whether you need to do anything about it. And also just to test the cooler and see how it's getting on. Now what I found is as you can see that some of the cores actually still do hit about 100 degrees so it is just a little bit toasty obviously you can ramp up the fans which is exactly what i did because they were set to quiet initially and then just turn them up and you know there is some flux in this but this is an extreme example as i said during daily use regular use normal use rendering videos playing games and just doing general things i found the temperatures far less than this but this is actually better performance and lower temperatures than what I was getting with the 12900K on a similar setup. So it is actually running cooler and more efficiently, despite what it might look like. Now, the point I'm making here actually is this is the default settings. I haven't done the AI overclocking and I haven't done the AI fan settings that you can do in Army Crate either. So you can obviously set that up and tweak things in there. You can tweak a lot in the BIOS. You can tweak stuff within the armory crate if you want to to get better performance to keep it cooler when necessary but what i found is actually out of the box it works as it should and it hasn't caused me any issues and it works really well you can also see the, what the cores have run out so you can see we're getting like 5500 megahertz on the p cores so it's not really throttling a great deal although obviously if it carries on at 100 degrees it's going to be a problem but what I found is that it doesn't seem to slow it down. And now it's worth noting that while capturing this footage, 
of running Cinebench, I was also obviously running OBS to capture that. I was running multiple programs and I was video editing on my other screen. So I was putting this machine under a lot of process power and it didn't seem to be causing any issues. It wasn't slowing down or causing any dramas. So nice and solid and stable and overall good performance. And here you can see the final result. Now it's worth noting it's 34,000 on the multi-core run on Cinebench. Others have reported higher scores, up to 38,000, but I've not done any overclocking. So you could push it even further than this. This is standard, but you can see it's beating quite a lot of other CPUs without any problems. So I'm going to quickly show a few things in Armory Crate that I think are worth knowing. One of which is I could have just used this to demonstrate the NVMe speed. So you can see that you can go through the various different drives. Now, the Sabrent drive is installed on the Hyper Expander card, which I actually harvested from a previous build. So you have to ignore that one. And also one of these P3 drives is a NVMe SSD from Gen 3. But you'll see if we go to the Kingston one, you can see that it is Gen 4 X4. So if you have drives installed and you want to check to make sure they are running at the right speed, you can obviously also do this and have a look in here. And they can also easily get this sort of information at a glance. And then you can run something like Crystal Disk Mark to make sure they're running at maximum speed that they should be. On the standard page, you can also see we have a number of different things that you can access in here, including AI overclocking. So you can turn that on in here, or you can do it in the BIOS. Now, I did find in the previous generation, if you did this, it did lead to a lot of temperature problems. And you could see already running the temps, so it was getting pretty hot. But you can also get a lot of information out of here and what you can do with it. And you can go into Fan Expert, which is worth doing if you have PWM controllable fans. And you can see that you can then run the auto tuning to work out what the best thing is. And then you also have control over these and you can do custom fan curves so you can adjust your fans to the position you want them in. So you can set them to spin up when you want to, for example. And then also you can also update a lot of your drivers and other things from in here. Just be wary of installing bloatware. And then you have the armory crate or a sync effects. So you can see... We've got the RAM is selected, also the RGB strips, the motherboard itself, and you can choose from various different lighting effects that you can then sync across those in a number of ways. And the other one to pay attention to is the updates in the update center, because you can make sure everything's running as it should be, and you can get updates for all these things. And there's also BIOS updates that are available within here. So my conclusion is this is a great motherboard and one to look out for, one to purchase. I personally think it would probably be better to go for a DDR5 motherboard. And that's not just because I happen to have a load of DDR5 running around, but that is more future proof. Uh, but however, this has been nice and stable with XMP on fast booting, stable performance, great looks, fits nicely in my build and overall a great bit of kit with very small, minimal complaints. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Don't forget to check out the links in the description to the other videos on this build. Thanks very much for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.